death be not proud. What's up, you ignorant Marxist pigs, holy diver, with the official 10th Hobby Ramble. This is the 10th Holy Diver Show, the big one zero. So let's give myself a little round of applause here. I made it this far. Uh, I have a really, really, really good show for you today. Uh, the topics are, I needed a miniature, let's go shopping, a collector's guide. Skull Pass, the first battle report. I'm going to get it, just briefly describe what happened. And then um, I have bench updates and a pike and shot battle report all here for you today on one show. So let's go with, uh, I needed a miniature and uh, a collector's guide and let's go shopping first. All right, here we are this morning. Let's uh, let's do it. Let's go shopping. So, I needed uh, a couple of miniatures, and I've also been shopping across the board, trying to pick up little things, bits and bits for my uh, fantasy and uh, armies and everything. And uh, let's go to the first search category. You know, just to give you an idea of whether or not it's worth it. This is a collector's guide. And so I did a search for night goblins. I set the parameters for everything from thirty dollars up to a thousand because I'm looking for good stuff. And you do find some good stuff. Okay, they want thirty-two fifty, uh, thirty-two thirty now for twenty night goblins. That kind of sucks. Mangler squig still expensive, but buy it because if you're going to play night goblins, you need one. But uh, let's see here. What was I going to talk about? We go down here. We get going. And you, you just notice that there's a lot of free shipping. Free shipping where I live. Now, this is one that I wanted to point out here. This is, uh, this is a good buy. I would actually bid on something like this because some of those metal heroes are actually really good models and they're very desirable. Not into the new Loon boss at all. I think he's a piece of crap. Like, why would they give him a moon mask? I'm, there, I, I'm sure there's some autistic GW fantasy boy uh, tarting out on that one. Let's see here. Uh, this going to bids five dollars shipping. Yeah, that's pretty good But uh, when it comes to like things like squigs and everything, you know, you just want to uh, I wanted to point this one out and uh, this is six dollars and 37 cents from the UK and The shipping rates from the UK are all over but that's actually pretty reasonable six dollars 37 cents American to ship from the UK and then uh, you go over you go over here to uh, this one. Where are they now? Oh, this guy wants sixteen dollars. It just jumps up from the UK right there. And uh, oh, here's another one: fourteen, fifteen, twelve. He wants twelve dollars and four cents for shipping, and that that's actually a pretty decent painted model. Too bad I already have it and painted one myself. So. Uh, this is a really good deal, these squig hoppers right here. Uh, and that's in America, so I would actually, I would actually bid down on that because uh, that's, that's not bad for what you get. You, oh, single guy by himself, metal sculpt, $40. And that, that's kind of what prompts me a lot of the time to uh, seek alternatives to just say, this guy's on co crack cocaine, $40. Uh, you don't have a best offer on that. Uh, I wouldn't pay more than 30 for him, and this guy is on crack cocaine. He wants 24.87 from the UK to ship it. I just saw six dollars from the UK for shipping. So what is this guy smoking? Well, you see, I live in Upper Uncton. I don't get to live in no and Lower Uncton where the shipping rates are decent. And even though these places are only two miles apart, I have to pay more for shipping, which means I got to pass those costs on to you. Uh, I, I have no idea what this guy is smoking. Twenty four eighty seven for sh to ship one guy, forty two, and, and he does have the best offer on there. But again, none of these pewter sculpts are worth more than thirty at any given time. Uh, see, there you go, right there, seven dollars to ship something from the UK, and that should be up to about, you know, if you're getting a box this big. That should not be more than seven dollars. I'm sorry. It's just, it's retarded, everywhere you go, and um, 
this is a good deal right here for these squig for the squig herd, the metal squig herd. These are really good models. Um, I actually checked this one out. I can't click on any of these uh, auctions because you know I don't want to. I don't want some guy to send me a cease and desist order. Well, you featured my store, and since I have no life, no job prospects living in the UK, I'm going to get very angry, and I'm going to have my lawyer send you a cease and desist letter. Because you live life on easy mode over there. I just figure there's some guy out there. I, I featured his store on my show, and he has literally nothing better to do. He works 20 hours a week, and then his other job is sell selling crappy crappy models from the 90s on eBay, <laughs> you know, that nobody wants. And uh, nobody wants this stuff. But, uh, yeah, this is, I, I actually checked this. This guy's an American, though. But, uh, yeah, his stuff is pretty well painted and worth taking a look at. Starting bid at 75 for 20 night goblins. Painted pretty good. It's not exorbitant. Not buying from Russians. And it's like, why would you, why would you do 40 for these squigs right here? Which squig handlers are really good. I mean, you're not doing night goblins right unless you're bringing a crap ton of squigs when you got this. This is a good buy. This is a good buy. And it makes me go, hmm, I, you know, if I didn't pay off my pickup truck right now and or have to put $500 into my Camry, I would buy that. And then this guy's a bit on crack cocaine, the basing. These are just messed up altogether. But uh, the one thing that I did buy was a Bretonian damsel. The best price that I found for a Bretonian damsel was, uh, let's see here, I'm going to, there she is right there. $30, best offer, on the horse, painted black, prime black, $4 in shipping. That's the, oh, and then this, this is definitely a good buy here from China. $6 to ship from China, yet it'll cost me, what was it? Oh, they want uh, $14 from the UK. Six dollars from China. I believe that China is farther away from me than the UK. Just saying, but you get a professionally painted model here that doesn't look like ass. And uh, I would definitely buy that. And then this one has no horse. But this is the one that I ended up going with was the Reaper Miniatures Crusader Lady Devana. And uh, I'm going to flash some pictures of what she looks like after she got painted and everything. So I did... Uh, I did my French colors, yellow and blue, I actually did almost three to five layers for every single color. I did a triad most of the times, and then I took the last color and mixed it with a little bit of white to get that extra little edge on there. And um, I wanted bright yellow, to, like fruit roll-up bright yellow, so I actually used inks and everything, but I'm really happy with the way she turned out. She scales bigger than 28 millimeter. This was definitely designed as a Bretonian alternative. They, they, Reaper is not stupid, and if you need a miniature, you can literally get anything you want from them. And uh, you just have to, I mean, $5.99 for one miniature, you know, and then, you know, they want $10 for the GW equivalent. You're just winning with Reaper every single time. I did get her for, I think it was, yeah, I did her for $10 and $4 in shipping. Pretty good price there. Really good. You can't beat a price like that. So, you know, why would I, why would I go over here to the damsel model? spend $35 plus seven for shipping from the UK or just get this at 14, 16. And then let's see, there was one that's just really outrageous, but these Chinese ones on foot are really good. So, oh yeah, the, here it is. Just the rider alone, 21.92 shipping from the UK, but we've just seen prices from the UK as low as 10 pounds, and this one's got the horse. So it doesn't make any sense. It the, the shipping, and this is why you can't buy from UK from UK sellers unless they've got their crap together. This guy wants nine wants less than 10 dollars to ship it. He's clearly got his, his crap together. Whereas this guy, he's clearly trying to extort money from you every penny he can. He's just pinching that titty for everything it's worth. But uh, uh, the, the next search I did was for some dwarf longbeards and slash hammers. And these guys actually come in at a pretty good price. Again, though, 
if you spend over $100 on the GW website, you can get these for $50 a box. He wants $69.99. I, I think what, they're, what some dumb collectors out there think is that you're paying for the box. You're paying, like this hipster douchebag says that you're paying for the experience. The, he's got eight watchers. These are pretty good, um, especially if you want them in America. But again, uh, I think you can get most City of Sigmar items from Walmart.com. So, you know, he's either going to come down on his price, you know, and offer something else. Like I could see $80 for two boxes on eBay. And that's where I go there. And then uh, let's see here. Who's trying to who's trying to give you a good butt fucking for today? Now this is a really good buy right here. I looked at these miniatures, and uh, the problem is he just doesn't have a full set. He's he, I think he's painted like three units, and it's like I wish people would paint a full army because I did something like this similar with some savage orcs that I'm selling. They haven't sold because I only have one unit. Now if I were to take the time and paint up another unit and then put put up a uh, a war drum on a chariot and actually make it some, a small wing of a force for kings of war, it would definitely sell. It would definitely sell. Um, now, this guy, he's on crack cocaine all day, every day. Here are his long beards. He's got 10 guys. He wants 311.54. He does have a best offer, but again, these models aren't really worth more than 15 bucks a guy. And I don't even think that comes. That's a. I don't even think that comes close to it. If yeah, that's 150 plus 10 for shipping, and that's what I'll give him. I'll give him 160 for that. Maybe he wants money for the movement tray. I don't know the movement tray that he made in arts and crafts at the community center in Europe somewhere. But 37 dollars and six cents. This guy's on crack cocaine. Uh, this guy, really good painter, really legit. Again, it's only one unit. I wish he had a small 1,000 point force. And then he put the price at about 2,000 bucks because about the best you're ever going to do per miniature. And I, I say this from experience is, uh, is probably about $40 on a unit. The best you're going to do is about $40. And I believe I, st I sold my, uh, my Reaper stand. Uh, my uh, Rawl Partha Madness stand for a, about three hundred dollars. What was it here? There were six miniatures on that. I, I I think I got somewhere around the neighborhood of uh, fifty dollars a guy. But those were those were rarer Rawl Rawl Partha models and everything. And then you, you got the worst part is you got some guy trying to sell crappy. Mer this guy's in America, trying to sell like crappy. Uh, miniatures that nobody wants it just it, it really pisses me off that they flood the site with this bull crap nobody wants this bull crap nobody's playing second ed nobody wants second edition models you have to be on crack everybody's on crack cocaine if you want second ed edition miniatures you know like the the the, the first miniature sculpted by the parries you know no please no i don't want that no oh crap what else have we got here um Guy with a flail, dwarfs with different weapons. It's just no. This guy wants this. Here's a. I have a. I live in Lower Uncton and I have a vintage dwarf marauder longbeard, seven sword metal miniature, 1992, and he wants twenty dollars and fifteen cents to ship it. Now again, we've seen examples of prices not being above ten dollars to ship anything in the UK. So again, you know, I mean, they're really trying to extort that money out of you, and then they're just polluting the site with more bull crap, bull crap. Um, okay, whatever that. And there you go, there you have it. So, as for uh, shopping and everything, you know, it's it's just a really a real mixed bag. Again, this is an okay deal, but you can buy two boxes from Walmart.com. I wouldn't buy these for the sprue. You're spending too much. You can just get these from, from, from direct from GW order, and they come with the square bases. You're just not getting the fancy graphics on the box. You're getting one of these. Uh, let's see if we can find one. Of, oh, you're getting one of these white boxes right here. You're getting a white box that says Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40K. You know, you're not getting the experience. 
And uh, that's, you know, that's pretty much the collector's guide. You know, I want you people to, if you're out there shopping for older models, I want you to give Reaper miniatures a look because again, Reaper just has so many good miniatures that you can buy and their sculptors are really good. Like here, here's a Black Knight that you could buy right here. All right, so here we are. We had the first battle for Skull Pass. Now, I used my uh, cam link to record the entire game. I had the camera that I'm using right now affixed on the table. Me and my friends set it up, and what happened was we only had this portion of the table filming for some reason, and then my friend, the way he was sitting, his... Uh, just the very tip of his the profile of his lower nose to his look to to his jaw was just kind of sitting in the shot and i mean when we were looking at the camera screen it looked like the entire table was framed up but for whatever reason uh it, it just wasn't so on the pc and so you, we had to watch that that's one of those bugs that i uh used my painting videos i'm trying to sort out all the bugs with cam link and all this obs software so that I can make something work because I'm not an expert and you know I will tell you that I am willing to put video painting videos out there just to, just because I believe in baptism under fire uh, so I, you know even if the quality is not the best I'm still gonna put it out there and I'm going to learn as I go because that's how you learn you learn by doing you learn by getting your hands dirty. I mean, I know that there are some artists out there that wouldn't put out a video at any quality that I put out for painting with the last three. But, you know, personally, I, I do this because I like it and I want people to be able to paint their armies and I want them to progress in the hobby. So uh, let's just briefly go over what happened in uh, Skull Pass. Like I said, I had the filming bugs, so... Uh, my, my buddy uh, soldiered with the Dwarf Army. He did okay. We, we had some modified rules. We took one unit of crossbow men and we made them rangers. And now what we did differently with them was they had a quick to fire crossbow. Which means they take no penalties for moving and shootings. They had a strength 3 crossbow instead of a strength 4 crossbow. But the strength 3 was still had the armor piercing rule so it was still minus one so it would still take make most of me get, give me no save or make me take it up on a six and then we also gave this one unit of dwarves movement four and scout so that made them a lot better especially as a chaff drop i think we'll do that to all the and then the other crossbow unit was also just standard crossbows we can't move and fire we have great weapons the uh, rangers themselves also sporting the great weapons. So uh, that's one thing that we did differently. The marsh that you see here, there's the skull pass, it's done. But the marsh that you see here, we, uh, we modified it that the dwarfs knew their way through the marsh because they had been living in the past. If you've ever read the book, uh, they had been living above ground waiting to build, a, uh, waiting, for, waiting to finish their mine. This was after uh, the goblins took over the Eight Peaks, and they had been living there for approximately 80 years, and it's taken them 80 years to dig their mine out, and they were just about to set the gates and move in. But uh, the goblins attacked them, so there's that. And then uh, I tried to theme the armies uh, around the book a little bit. Now, in the book, there was only one Slayer, but I brought 20. He, he, it, my friend didn't really grasp the concept of how the Slayers are supposed to work. He was talking about chaff drops. Well, as far as chaff goes, Mike, I'm just going to let you know again. Crossbows are chaff. Rangers are chaff. Slayers are chaff. Miners are, ju are just kind of there. They can be chaff if you want them to be, but they, they're going to come up and they're going to move in and try to get a rear charge off. And then... The other slayers are chaff, and then the dragon slayer himself is chaff. So one, two, three, four, five, and then both of the cannons, if need be, they're chaff as well. Six, seven, seven units of chaff. Um, he did deliver his dwarf lord, and his dwarf lord did kill a 40-man goblin unit by themselves, even though they got magicked all to hell, they got shot all to hell. Uh, I think next, uh, next time we do the battle, I'm going to theme the army, back for the night goblins. I'm not going to take a squig herd. Uh, the squig herd 
kind of broken to, do, uh, to pull on a new player because, let's just face it, squigs are awesome. You're not playing Night Goblins right unless you're bringing squigs and, you know, a weapon skill 4, 2 attacks, strength 5, initiative 3, really good. I mean, I, I've actually seen, a, I, I've had my squig herd run into the side of a Chaos Warrior regiment and they beat the crap out of those Chaos Warriors. I mean, it was just no contest. I uh, use stone trolls instead of uh, instead of river trolls. I mean, just standard trolls. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of dial it back a notch, and then we'll try again because he's still kind of grasping the concepts. And uh, you know, he had one side do really, really poorly, and then he won the other side. But it was still a goblin victory right out. I did lose a great deal of goblins. I think I had I think I had roughly fifty goblins out of a seventy-six man unit left. This entire unit was destroyed. A couple of the spider units got destroyed. The trolls, they did end up fleeing, but he never caught them. And it would have been a little bit better of a victory if, the, if uh, these guys did end up catching them. But if we didn't have those bugs, I would have had a battle report for you to put out there. Other than that, I just got some bench updates. I have not been painting a lot. Uh, I think the last two weeks I painted three Macedonian Peltists. Now, the good news is uh, I only have like five open projects and one of them is a, I have four Battletech mechs I gotta paint. I've gotta finish the Macedonian Pikemen. I mean the Macedonian Peltists. I gotta finish four Roman, what do you call it, archers. I gotta finish my Confederates and then I've gotta finish Alexander and his guys and then uh, I, I actually sent some stuff out to be commissioned and prepped for me to paint, like my Mega Knobs. They're going to get built, based, shaded, and uh, the bases are going to be sanded and painted brown for me. And then they're going to send, he's going to send them back to me and I'm going to paint them. So uh, I, I, I had some prep work doing because I do not like building Games Workshop models at all. Uh, mostly because, you know, like, you build a kit like the Mega Knobs, why can't they just come in five unicast pieces? You get two different arm variants, and everything's just like, I have a body, I glue my feet on, I glue my head on, I glue my arms on. Unicast pieces, instead they come on this big, huge sprue, it's just... Everything that you do in, in 40k land or GW land, it's just work. Work that I don't want to deal with. And uh, I also sent out Peter Don Carolina's Spider Riders. Uh, he's going to basically do the bases and prime the spiders bright, co brighter colors than I can get with a uh, with a paintbrush. He's got a couple of fluorescents that he's going to use on these things. They're going to be a very bright jungle red or something. That, that's just the way I see them. So uh, yeah, just I'll have some projects that'll be ready for me, but uh, I like having no projects really open that are bigger than, no, I have nothing bigger than 20 guys technically. You know, I have 20 bases of, uh, I have roughly 13 bases of Civil War stuff that I gotta do, and I think that's all I'm gonna do for this year. And then once the summer starts to, uh, go towards the, once we get to the middle of the summer, we're talking July, I'll have a lot of these projects just kicked out because Memorial Day is going to come up. All of my Macedonians, I'm just going to take Memorial Day and I'm going to finish my Romans, my Macedonians, Alexander and his two guys, those Battletech Max, and uh, that's that's where I'm going to end that there. And I might have some, the, the remainder of the Night Goblins painted for me. I just, I don't know yet. But I, I want to make sure that my, my uh, project query is uh, empty so that if I do want to do a painting video, I have the time to make it. I have the time to make it with this monstrosity that you see before me. And then I've got to figure out a new space for my painting. I, I lighted this room really well. I had an extra strip put in. I'm going to actually have these uh, drop down and put out so that they put out even more light. But that's pretty much by and large, been working a lot. My boss is like, hey, are you hungry for hours? And I'm like, I just checked my paycheck this uh, this week, dude. I, I, I got 19 and a quarter hours of overtime for the two weeks, man. I mean, you're already using me to the full effect. It's like, oh man, that's nothing, that's nothing. But I'm not, screw that. 
I'm not working more than 10 hours a week on overtime. Screw that. Anyway, without further ado, let's go to the Pike and Shot Battle Report. Yeah, that's it. Reach up there with your tall arms. Come on. I don't know if I'm tall. Reach enough. up there with that staff of raw. Buddy, I don't, like I can't. Hold Do you want a book, book to stand on? The problem is, is I can't hold both my arms up that high. Yeah, there we go. I has got two fucking bulbs up in bulbs. there. Just, just throw one in. That's fine. Oh my God! Look at that biology at work there, Chad. God, my wife doesn't see this. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna You're know. Fucking videotaping. Uh, well, yeah. I'm just well, look at this bite. Look at him stretch up there like a moose. You know, just to get up in there. Take the other one out for me, real quick. Or well, are you are you are you, oh, are you gonna run it both? That's good. Cause you don't want to take the other one out if you want to run just one bulb. I don't even know where did the where did the I thing got go? it. I got it. Ugh. More. Tea. All right, so we're gonna have a recreation of the same battle. This is turn one for both of us, but we're ending on Ranger's turn here. Uh, you wanna you wanna give us a flex today, or nah. you wanna show everybody just how much of a chat? You look a little Dude, soft around wife? the chest, man. Uh, no, not really. Like they're gonna start hanging down to your knees. Or Dude, something? I can hold pencils in this cleavage. Oh, uh, okay, right? okay. I got threes to hit your ass back. Here we go. And I hit you six times. So you go ahead. You've got eight attacks that you get to re-roll for. That can re-roll for. Cry, baby. He's got to bring his Prince Rupert. Onward! Dun, dun, dun. Threes. Oh, well, that's all of them. I get to re-roll two. You get to re-roll two, which is something I don't get to do. Doesn't oh, matter. Doesn't matter. All right. And now we both have... Dude, we're both fucked. The same save. Is there a morale modifier when these guys charge? Or is it just they hit you and that's pretty much it? Let's consult the book. Consult the book and we'll be back before we take the saves. We are tied at six to six. So no, that's only lances I was thinking of, which is in this game, and there are minus two and sometimes a minus one. So we drew the combat. Um, after turn one, it looks something like this. All the way across, he did one-to-one. -one. I did make a save there, one-to-one -one on each of my wings. Uh, Command and Shot do better by themselves, but I think I'm going to want to get rid of uh, Prince Rupert and his boys. Uh, most definitely in the next turn. Just sweep that cavalry off the table. And then, um, other than that, I think we're good. I, I'm not going for a tabling this time. Mm -hmm. So a very, very bloody turn two. What I like about this game is how quickly... We're only at turn two, and it's already going bloody. Oh, well, we also hell. went full in, though, too. We didn't puss about, either. We didn't puss about. We, like, we, we, we went hard. Right into each we other. crashed right into each other. Um, these guys moved forward. Took a shot, did nothing. Uh, on my turn in the close combat, Prince Rupert and his boys, uh, they, they got they got messed up, and that's what happened on my combat turn two. And then um, these guys came down on his turn, shot, and he didn't hit me at all. Now over here in these melees, he won by two over there, I won by two over here. Now what happens is when you're at max stanima and you're forced to retire, that unit is just destroyed. Outright. So I lost an entire unit of hand gunners. He lost his pike brick and his uh, musketeers. Musketeers. Uh, those uh, actually, those musketeers get to retire. I forgot. Those musketeers get to retire because I didn't chase them. I chased after your pike brick, and they're the only ones I could have contacted with one unit. So they are obliged to stay six inches away from me, still disordered. That's where we. That's where we fucked up there. Sorry. If I chased you with the entire thing. No, I changed to good support so that I could empty yeah, that over here or backwards. something. I went backwards. These guys can't move, and those guys are at full stanima, ready to go. These guys are at max. And those guys are at max. And then that's how it went. So uh, we're going to be going into Parliament turn three. All right, so this was a very bloody turn three. Uh, the last thing I did here was rally. We went in there, charged them. Oh, you never ran away. Let's see what you did. You um, oh no, we take your leadership we test. I won by I think three. three. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, nine's pretty good. Uh, nine, six. six. That's and that's not, not a five or less. We've had five. five or less on We've every been, single. Yeah. Uh, let's look at it. It's so, uh, back, back, back. 206. All right. 206. Six. Retires one full way from the enemy. After moving, the unit is disordered. All right. So I'm going to stay in combat with you, and that's about all I'm going to do on a sweep in advance. But at least you're not destroyed. Yeah. Okay. If it was shooting... It would have been hold its ground. All right, so over here, you didn't do anything to my guys, and you got a, you got a, you uh, you took one wound there. Yeah, I took one wound. And then you forgot to do you forgot to dice that. So did uh, I didn't do anything to you today? No, you didn't. So it's when it's lose by one. It's lose by one, but this is where you break because you roll snake eyes. No, still rolling hot. We're so you hold in combat, shaken. Yeah. Or unless you're forced to retire. Uh, no, I believe I'm forced to retire no matter what. Uh, what was that? That was a 6 plus 7, 13, minus 1, 12. Um, that was hand-to-hand -hand, uh, infantry. Hold it ground. No. Hold your ground without, your penalty. Ground without okay. penalty. Okay. Yep. Uh, he took out. Prince Rupert, shot one there. There's actually a bullet on them. Yep. There's a bullet on them. And then uh, he won over here. Completely killed them. He took two wounds for his troubles, and on the next turn he can turn around and take a wound off of every single one of those units, which will be very advantageous for him because I'm kind of broken up now and my cavalry's way over there. And I, it's not like I can just charge them. So, we're gonna go into pike and shot turn four. So here we are after turn four. Uh, he rallied them so that they'll be able to shoot me when I charge them. Over here, he flank charged me, but we tied because he only did one wound to me, and I did one and one. And uh, because of flank support, he has plus one, so it, it's a wash combat. Over here, he turned around to face me, rallied, and took one off of each one of these units, which he can do because they're still within three of their parent, and they still count as one unit. This is one unit in pike and shot. So... We're going to go into turn five. So here we are. Uh, this is probably where we're going to call it. Uh, the cavalry went up there, destroyed the entire command and shot unit, and then we rolled double sixes, which means Prince Rupert is dead and take, or taken captured. He's hiding in that forest over there behind the tree. That's why it never would have really happened in real life. But. Which, uh, uh, no, he would have been too tough to kill. Uh, maybe. Some of those guys, you know, excellent in warfare. And then over here, we broke from combat, moved uh, as equidistant from the enemy that we could. They're shaken, they can't chase me. We did rally here, mm -hmm. and then down here, he put this unit out of action that's been enfilading the crap out of the one pike and sh uh, musketeer, musketeer unit the, uh, the entire game. Uh, for, for at least two turns now, he's been shooting that same unit, but uh, it's kind of got jumbled up, and uh, this is kind of where the world ends, and I hope you liked it. And there you have it, Internet, a Parliament victory. I think uh, doing up some of the battle reports and putting them in as segments is probably the best way to go. Like I said, until I can get the uh, bugs sorted out and... Um, get going with the live streams, uh, you know, it's just, it's going to be a little while. Again, if I had somebody who's a little more tech savvy, can actually help me with the live streaming and uh, knows how to set that stuff up, it would be a different story, you know. Somebody could just come in and instantly, like, this is how you do this, this is how you do that, and this is how you do it every single time so that I have a pattern. But I have to learn my own pattern, so. Other than that, I was, uh, I know I had talked about monetizing the channel, uh, that and, and turning on the and turning on that button. That is a big no. I am never going to hit that button and give YouTube any kind of and allow YouTube to make any kind of money off me whatsoever. Uh, mostly because it's about value. You know, I mean, if I make a 20-minute video, they could put up to 30 minutes of ads, and they can make you get up and push the button four times. Four times in a row. And, you know, I, I, I think that my viewers deserve more. Uh, I You know, I, I talked to one guy, uh, you know, just... I said, you know, too many commercials, and uh, this guy Squarehammer got back to me, he's like, it's not choke change, you know, this is how I earn currency, and I'm like, really? 
It's just choke change. Is it really evil? I made $400 last year. Oh boy, $400. You know what I do if I want $400? I deliver salt to old people. I actually trade labor for this thing called currency, and I get a lot more money for my time. But, you know, it's just... Uh, I think the Holy Divers show is always going to be a free show. Bring a blanket, a picnic basket, and the family. Bring a drink. And it's always going to be a free show because I just... I just can't, I can't do it. The, the YouTube ads, the YouTube, ad, the YouTube ads are unbearable. They are outright unwatchable. I would not wish any YouTube advertisements on my worst enemy. Now, I know that some of the people I watch have turned on the monetizing button, but it's just really, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do that to you, the viewer. Now, uh, I did just send some messages out to my patrons. Uh, this is why I have Patreon set, Patreon set up. If you want me to do a, uh, sh uh, a number here on the show and want, you want me to rant about something, that is what Patreon is set up for. That is what you pay me to do. If there's something bugging you in the hobby, let me know. And uh, other than that, if I don't see you, uh, keep playing, keep painting, and stay metal, my friends. And we'll see you in the next one. When on. I friggin' sold out. It's better to burn out than to fade away. Whoa, whoa, whoa.